G'day folks. Oh, what we have here is a little mystery prize that a good friend of my dad's gave me. Um, this has been sitting in storage about 12 months now. I just haven't had time to get around to it. Uh, obviously stored in the house, which is why I generally didn't get around to it. But I believe it's a reel-to-reel -reel tape player, magnetic tape player. So I'll try and open it one-handed, but I'm going to have to... Uh, yeah, probably put the camera down and do something different. Yeah, it's wrapped, wrapped in stretch wrap, so this stuff is annoying as hell to try and break once you get to a certain thickness. So, yeah. I'm going to open this up, put everything on the bench, and then we'll go from there because this is going to be very difficult. Okay, well that's the complete unit. It's a Sanyo Stereophonic unit. It's a single reel, well, reel to reel tape drive. I'm guessing 8 millime millimeter or something. 8 mil. Oops. Model MR929. AC 100, 117, 125, 220, or 240 volts AC. 50 or 60 cycles. So multi voltage, you can select it, I guess. Made it by Sanyo Electric Osaka, Japan. They don't make stuff like this anymore. It's even a little cooling fan on the main capstan motor. But, of course, a lot of the latches and things are broken. Uh, you're supposed to be able to carry this by the handle here, but I can see broken bits of plastic and stuff, so I'm guessing it might not go together properly. Although, yeah, if I get these to hook on properly, I'll be able to carry it as a single unit. Yeah. Very dirty, a lot of mildew, corrosion. This was on a beach, stored, stored inside a beach hut for a while. So there's a lot of salt air corrosion. All the uh, controls and things are very corroded. It re requires a lot of TLC. Yeah, you can see the pinch wheel there is very, very corroded. Even the heads and things, that's just nasty. So this is a restoration project for a very dedicated collector. I don't have the time or the parts to do this sort of thing. It's a nice little unit. If I had some tapes, I'd just set it up as a display piece, make it nice and clean. But I don't even have a tape. It's very stiff. Very, very stiff. Hmm. Yeah, so I should put some power to it and see if it does it actually does anything. I'm guessing the belts are going to be rotted and perished, but who knows. There's four screws holding the front in here, so I'll try and pop it apart and give you a look inside before we uh, call it a day. And yeah, I'll probably just wash it down, give it a good clean up, and turn it into a display piece if I can get some tapes. Or at least just one dummy tape, just to set up as a uh, display piece. Because yeah, that's pretty badass. Reel to reel is always cool. It's just a shame this one's in such rough condition. Okay, we're plugged in, so let's see what happens. We've got power on. That's good. Little neon still works. It's in playback mode. There we go. Yeah, the belts are completely rooted. But the funny thing is it's still trying to work. That's pretty damn good. I don't make stuff like that anymore. Forward. The whole thing is just pushed over. It's rubbing on this housing. <laughs> it's not happy, but it works. Well, I like, this old, I like old technology. I just don't have time to play with this thing. That's why it's been in storage for the last 12 months or so. 
Anyway, let's pop this front panel out and just have a quick look inside. We'll see if it's a solid state or vacuum tube. It looks modern enough to be solid state, but I have seen some uh, national brand ones which were all vacuum tube. I've even got a uh, little board out of one which was completely smashed. They dropped a fridge or something on top of it and smashed all of this, but I pulled the board out of it when I was living back in Frankston, and it's got about three vacuum tubes and a couple of transistors on it. It's sort of a, a transient board, I guess you'd say. They're going between vacuum tubes and transistors. So it'll be interesting to see what this is. Okay, well there you have it. A nice old plywood case. Very dirty, of course, but still very authentic. Uh, no vacuum tubes. This is all transistor-based. A lot of old capacitors. Rubicons, mostly. Then with the original Rubicon type font on them that you still see today. There's a capacitor for the uh, fan motor, 2 microfarad, 230 volt AC. So it's like a synchronous AC motor or something like that. Um, yeah, amazing stuff. There's a lot of wax coming out of that inductor. Where does that one go? That goes down to somewhere. Yeah. It's a big filter capacitor for the main supply. That's your voltage selector. There's a multi-pin plug that you stuff in there to select the correct voltage, 100 to 240 volts. Um, yeah, amazing. Mode selection switch. That's a mode switch there. Big slide switch. Various caps, 500 microfarad, 3 volt Rubicon. Um, yeah, nice stuff. And notice as old as it is, a lot of these rubber belts are still intact. They've probably been replaced at one point, but still, that's doing pretty well considering how long it's been stored for. There's a break on that drum there. More rubber belts and things, they're all still there. They haven't broken. But I can see very large cracks in them, so they won't be far off. Um, transistors under these things, it's all solid state as I said before, there's four of these, probably two channels, one per, two per channel. There's another big mode switch. Looks like a mode switch anyway. Yeah, that should slide back and forth depending on what mode you put it into. Yeah, that's on the front there. Oh, sorry, that. Yeah, the front selector switch is what push, pushes and pulls these mode switches into place. Yeah, it's nice. It's nicely built. I just wish I had time to fix the damn thing up and even tapes to run in it. It's just one of those things. I just don't have the space for it, so... I'm going to give it a really good clean-up. I don't even know if I could export this being as dirty and plywood and wood based as it is, I don't even know if I could export it. Not without exporting wildlife with it. <laughs> Who knows what's living inside the speaker boxes. Hmm. I know someone wants to buy it. 45 Sound Samson, somebody or other. Um, record and vintage audio enthusiast. But I just don't know. I don't know if I can even export this as it is. Plus the cost of shipping this thing would be rather high. You'd have to be prepared to pay probably $150 or so for shipping. It's not going to be cheap. But anyway, I just thought I'd give you a quick look at it while I uh, go through the spare room. I'm just sorting out old plasma TVs and things like that. And I came across this stored away in the corner and it reminded me, why not do a video on it and show people what it is? Because this is the old fashioned tape player and cassette or tape recorder. I shouldn't say cassette because it's not a cassette. You've got separate, a take-up reel and a supply reel. And unfortunately I don't have either of those. I've got 16mm reels, but they're for my uh, Bell & Howell Filmer Sound projectors. And that's another thing I want to do. I want to put a new uh, worm gear in my Bell & Howell and make that run again. Because the poor old worm gear is cracked and falling apart. So I can't run the projector again. But that's another thing for the future anyway. Enough rambling, hope you enjoy the video and stay tuned for more.